40, 50, 60. I'm actually on 17 tablets a day. No Gallagher. This is drug taking. You know, I have these slightly scary hallucinations where I remember my, my brother gave me this brown teddy bear and I just kept sort of seeing it all over the place in strange places. Maybe that was in some way my subconscious kind of warning me, you know, be careful, you could, be, you could do something silly here. The process of actually lying on a slab made me feel a bit like I was being laid out in a morgue. To be honest with you, I was terrified. It's very lonely for these children and their families, and then they have to face stigma. You know, whatever you feel about diagnosis, these you know these individuals have got to be are asking for help, and we have to do. We have to apply evidence-based knowledge to help individuals and recognise as a society um, that being judgmental is really not very, not very helpful for like, these children or their families. Hi Barry, caught at nine, I've had five really bad days and uh, feeling quite bad. It's been unusual to have five bad days on the trot. Um, I'm hoping that I feel better tomorrow. don't know whether it's because of the news night thing going out tonight. Uh, other issues, I don't, know, I don't know. I've just had five bad days. Still feeling a bit anxious about how the film's going to be cut. And uh, just trying desperately to uh, get to the next day, just trying to prepare myself for the news night broadcast, so uh, I'll sign off now and say, uh, see you later. But tonight and later this week, our science editor, Susan Watts, brings news of medical developments which promise a revolution in the way many mental illnesses are treated and so literally may offer the promise of life over death. The statistics are shocking. One in four of us will suffer some form of mental illness during our lifetime. And mental illness costs lives. One in six people with bipolar disorder or manic depression will kill themselves. Could you just explain what is ADHD? Is ADHD the same as kind of naughtiness? And right. a lot of people ask this, and the answer is no. ADHD is one of the neuropsychiatric disorders. It falls under the group of what we, what we would call early onset disorders, like for ADHD, by definition, the, the, the problems have got to be there and causing problems before the age of seven. There are three main sorts of features of, of, of the disorder. Um, first of all, there's like very marked hyperactivity. So these children are uh, unable to stay seated in situations that children of their own age and, and, and developmental uh, level wouldn't ordinarily be able to do. So for example, they cannot stay, you know, cinema, going to the cinema, going to church. They are constantly moving, so they find play activities very difficult. But it's not just this, they have very marked concentration difficulties. And of course, once they reach school, that causes major problems with um, learning and education, even when they're very, you know, they can be very bright. They're unable to organise themselves, lose things, forget things. And then the third feature is impulsiveness, doing things without thinking which are dangerous, constantly interrupting. Again, everyone interrupts at times, but just to the point where it really interferes with dis you know, normal discourse. I thought prior to doing these films that I could ask simple questions and get simple answers. And there's not simple answers. There are complex answers, but when you probe a little bit deeper than like 
just to try and get under the skin a bit, you find out that the experts don't even know. And when the experts don't know, then it prompts a question of, why don't we know? Not only have you got to have severe symptoms, for there to be a diagnosis, you've got to have them in more than one setting. So it's not just at home, it's got to be in another setting. And then the final thing before making a diagnosis is that these symptoms have to be resulting in significant impairment, problems with school, educational failure, lack of friendships. Have a look. Have a look at the size of that. Wow. That's a monster, isn't it? Sign on for us, just uh, yeah, yeah, like over your shoulder. Okay, can you? Because I, I, I like, I want the top of your teeth. How do you actually treat ADHD? A diagnosis is just part of a person, so you have to take into context the person as well as the the disorder. So where children, for example, have got very severe ADHD, you would tend to use a combination of um, school support and school-based intervention, um, medication and behavioural treatment. When they get older, uh, something which is called cognitive behavioural treatment, which is think, you know, ways mm -hmm. of thinking mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. control of, of your thoughts. The illness is so ingrained and so part of me, I can't actually distinguish between the two between the one trying to find out about the illness and the one that is the illness. It, it seems to be an enigma wrapped up in a riddle. How long is it going to take for us to understand how this, how this organ works? We don't know enough. We don't know enough about the brain. We don't know enough in research terms about bipolar. But I still want to continue doing the films. I want to keep asking the questions until I find, not closure, but encouragement that we can find the answers. That's, we need that encouragement. We need the level of investment. We need everybody to go, hang on a minute, we need to know more about the brain. Can you just tell us how things have been going over the last four years, Twink? Yeah, it's. Um, I think I'm. I'm starting to see the green shoots of getting better. The last four years have been challenging. Times been desperate. Does anybody know what causes ADHD? You need a number of different approaches to really understand something as complicated as, as the brain and, and, and a complex condition like ADHD. There are multiple uh, factors that work together in increasing your risk. But what we've been focusing on mainly in Cardiff is the genetics and how genes work with environments in regard, with regard to ADHD. Why are we interested in that? Not because a gene is going to predict you know, with certainty ADHD, it will hopefully give us clues about the underlying brain processes and biology um, and give us clues then as to how it arises and, and clues for you know, future interventions. It's like um, having a little window into the brain and then working out what sorts of, how, how it arises and what makes it worse. It's amazing. Great, thank you. Strikes me that we know very little about the brain. Yes. Absolutely. As scientists begin to unpick the workings of the brain, the challenge is to find new, more effective treatments. Until now, it's been pretty hit and miss, almost stumbling across drugs that happen to work. But with new tools such as brain scans and genetics, scientists are talking about a much more sophisticated approach, bringing the medicine of mental health out of the dark ages and into the 21st century. Mm. You can get very long for six hours of filming. Apart from that, it's all right.
how will it go down with the uh, mental health community? Time will tell. I saw my sister a few months ago and she says, I was talking about doing the album and stuff, and she says, oh, do you not remember Ali Bali, your mum used to sing? And I, I got up on the internet and I, 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 I started strumming the chords and I broke down. Not surprisingly, you're much more likely to develop post-traumatic stress disorder after some traumas than you are after others. So for example, rape, a horrific traumatic event, is the trauma that most research shows is most likely to result in you developing PTSD. So some studies have shown that over 80% of people who are raped go on to develop post-traumatic stress disorder. Right, Anne, I promise me to do one thing. On your way to work, when you come back from work, you play a tin stone CD in your car. That's the only way to get it into your subconscious. Yeah.